I just, I feel like it's, something's attached to me. I've seen um, dark shadows, an actual face. It's been, it's been pretty scary. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you in William's room? William. What? What? I definitely want some answers. Now it's creeping down the floor. I just felt like a... So you need to go. You need to leave this family alone. Whoa. Leave this house and don't return. And I try not to think about it because I feel like if I think about it, that I'm giving that energy, whatever it is. So I try to ignore it a lot, but a lot of times you can't, you can't ignore it. So Bill, you moved into this house how long ago? Um, I've been here for 14 years. Prior to you moving into this house, did you ever have any problems with paranormal activity? Yes, I have. The first time was kind of like the same thing that's going on here. I would see the shadows or something that would was peeping in on me. And then, you know, when I would try to notice it, it, it pulls back. The second time was um, I actually did see somebody. It was like it was a guy and it had on a hooded sweatshirt and it just walked right by our room. And I got up and went to go see if it was one of my kids up. And when I got up to go after it, it was gone. As long as there wasn't any negativity going on, um, I didn't notice anything or felt anything. But when we would have periods of negativity going on, um, that's when it seemed the activity would, would start to pick up. I, you know, I could feel it. I felt like something was on my back. I just felt this heaviness on me. Um, and I just had a, a real bad sense of dread um, on me all the time. How often would there be arguments? Two or three times a week at least. They would go from maybe, you know, a maybe a little bit of screaming, yelling, or as much as the kids punching the wall or something or throwing something. Um, but if we was not in the house, all of us, everybody got along great, everybody got along good. So it just seemed like the house just carried a lot. What would you say is the most active part of the house? I'm going to say the hallway. The main hallway that yeah, leads to the bedrooms? the hallways that leads to the bedrooms, yes. What type of stuff do you see in the hallway? Um, shadows. Dark shadows. I've seen um, an actual face. It's been, it's been pretty scary. Now that I know, I, I always watch for it. I'll, I'll lay there and I'll, uh, I'll close my eyes for a little bit and I'll open them up and I can see it. It, it sees, it, like I see it and then it pulls back real quick. Um, or if I move positions in the bed, if I get on the other end of the bed, it seems like it moves its position too. It'll go on the other side of the wall and it'll bend down and it'll peep under my TV enough just to see me and then when I see it too, it pulls back. But I figured if I left the lights on that it would maybe deter it away, but it doesn't. It seems to make it worse. So lights on, lights off. Yeah, either way, it, it, it's coming. It's curious because you said you were only the second owner of this house, right? Yes. It was built in 1985? Yes. And there was no documented deaths in the house? No, uh-uh. And that's the curious thing about the paranormal is, is it's like, what are the manifestations? What are you seeing? Is it a manifestation of your own emotions and energy? Or is it with the land? Was there something here prior to the house it's, being built? It's very possible because at one time this was all farmland. There was only there was only one house up here. So I don't know. It, it very well could be the land um, because there has been no deaths in the house. Let me ask you this because you have a camera that you bought yes to kind of monitor you bought it for the purpose of paranormal activity Absolutely. you thought maybe you could capture something yes 
I came out of my bedroom and I come out here to watch TV. And the camera picks up, um, it'll pick up motion. So unfortunately it picked, it picked me up. So it sends a notification to my phone. So I pulled it up and I, and I seen this deal on my arm. Um, I, I didn't know what it was. Um, kind of freaked me out. Looking at the picture, the first question that I had for you is, did you have a blanket draped over your arm right. or something? Because that's what it looks like. Yeah, it, it looks like, a, yeah. It looks like there's something on you. Right, right. Which is yeah. funny because that's what you described. Was yeah. When you're in the house, you feel like there's something it on you. It feels like something's on me, absolutely, yes. I just, I feel like it's, something's attached to me. And when I seen that picture, it just, I don't know. It just, it just kind of blew me away when I seen that picture. My uh, younger son, William, he's 14. Um, and when he comes here, he gets woke up a lot um, on all hours of the night. Also too, I have a roommate and when he's here, he's actually scared. It, 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 he sleeps with his light on back there. He's really scared. So um, I've seen shadows go into his room um, laying in my bed, I watched it go down the hallway and go straight into his room. And I'll tell you something else is weird too. Like, you know, in your house, you know, every door that opens and closes, you know how they all sound. Every door has its own unique sound of opening and closing. So you always know. A lot of times I've, I've been laying in bed and I swear I, it sounds like the room to the man cave downstairs door, that door's opened. I have gotten up so many times, woken up out of a dead sleep and went around this whole house to make sure because I, th I thought somebody had, was in the house several times. I just, it, it, I feel like the house brings me down. It, it don't want me to do anything. It's like whatever it is wants to feed off of that, I think. And it's, uh, the more I'm down, I think the more energy it gets. But it'd be nice to find out yeah. what's going on. Yeah. So I definitely want some answers. Yeah, we hope to get you answers and also to try and help because you had mentioned the negativity kind of when there's higher periods of negative emotions in the house, you notice the activity intensifies. So yes. We did bring things that are meant to cleanse negative energy from spaces and from your person Good. in hopes that you can get back to feeling comfortable in your home again. Absolutely, I definitely need some answers. Yeah. All right, so Bill just left. When I was sitting down with him on the couch, he conveyed that there's paranormal activity in the house, but he's not really sure what the cause is. We may be dealing with some sort of emotional manifestation, like a poltergeist type situation. And he, even he admitted the negative emotions through his life affect the paranormal activity in the house. I mean, is that what you kind of got from the gist of it, Pam? Mm-hmm, absolutely. What we'll do now is just walk through the house. We'll kind of pick up on what each part of the house feels like, what impressions we get. I was gonna say maybe we just start in the basement down here and, okay. and, and see, since we're already halfway down here and, and, and see. Up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See what, uh, if maybe something is lurking down here, see what kind of impression we get. This is obviously where he watches football <laughs> games and you can tell what team he roots for. You know, he talked a lot about that kind of depressive state that he gets in when he's here by himself and the house makes him feel, or he thinks the house makes him feel even more depressed. Mm -hmm. And if he spends a lot of time in this room, no windows, no real connection to the- Find me. Find me. Find you said he just spends a lot of time in this room. That's what we're hoping to do tonight. We're hoping that we can find you and that you'll come out and talk to us, whoever you are. Bill thinks that you seem to have attached yourself to him or there's some sort of energy that he picks up on, sees that scares him and sometimes his son. We're here to hopefully talk to you or to see proof that you're here.
I wanted to grab the Mel meter because the Mel meter itself is going to tell us if there's any EMF or electromagnetic fields. Hauntings can be simulated in people's houses that have high EMF in living areas like bedrooms, around their beds. It's said that the high EMF can cause people to hallucinate and see shadows and things of that nature. So the first thing we will always do when we come to residential houses, grab our EMF detector and start checking around these living areas like the beds if it's, if it's reported there to see if high EMF may be the issue. That was weird. Did it get a reading? It hit a point four, and then it went down to a zero point zero, and then this went off. And then it went off on Pam's behind me. He said the closet too, so I don't know if you want to touch it in there for. Yeah. So far, we got a point zero. We got no EMF around the bed, so that's good. That tells me that there's not an electrical issue. Let me run it over here. Yeah. Uh. Flat. Zero. Yep. He does say also that his son feels something looming over him, so we're gonna do an EMS sweep in there too. Whoa. I wasn't filming it, but that just hit a 2.7 right here in the doorway for no reason. Ooh, and I got spider webs on my arm. And that's where it went off. It jumped up. Oh yeah. Right there, and then mine went off behind me. And, and it hit a 2.7 right here. There's a detector above you. I don't know if that would do anything. 0, 0.0. What about the thing? Thermostat over here. Zero point zero. What's it reading now? Zero point zero still. Yeah, so far. Yep, no, it is f flatlined. It's like no EMF at all whatsoever. So, so that's not the issue here, it seems. The paranormal activity that they're experiencing in this house it definitely isn't being brought on by unusual EMF. We've proven that by walking through here with all the lights on, everything else on checking to make sure there's no strange or high or even dangerous EMF levels, so. What is your name? My name's Pam. My name's Ryan. My name's Dave. What's your name? Actually, so. Sin. Huh. Sit. Sin. Oh, sin. Sin. That's weird. What is that little thing he just put in the middle of the hallway? Find me. That's exactly what it said downstairs. We're trying to find you. Help, uh, help us try and find you. Can you touch that thing that uh, Ryan just put in the middle of the hall? And then we'll come try and find you. It's not going to hurt you if you touch it or go near it. It's almost too quiet. Yeah. Well, do you want to gather up this equipment and start setting up for the abandonment? And as the sun goes down here, see if we can leave this house empty. 
see if we can capture any of the unexplained sounds or shadows or anything that Bill has reported to see here inside the house. And then come back and get started. See if we can communicate with anything or capture that activity for ourselves and hopefully validate his experiences for him. Absolutely. Let's see if, if we can get some answers as to uh, what he's been dealing with here. Let's do it. All right, so we are getting ready to leave Bill's house for abandonment. We have three cameras set up, all the equipment is set up. We're gonna leave for about an hour and see what happens inside the house while it is completely empty. We have a camera here in the living room with a REM pod in that hallway that he always sees shadows moving. Cat ball here, cat ball in the living room. They only light up if something touches them or moves them. So if you see them light up on their own, could be paranormal. Our second camera is set up in Bill's bedroom, pointed across towards the doorway out into the hallway here where he says he always sees shadows peek around the doorway at him when he's laying in bed. In there, there is a Mel meter which has the REM function, so it detects static as well as EMF and ambient temperature. Down in the basement, there's a camera from his sports man cave hangout room down the hallway. There is the paranormal music box set up on the floor, as well as multiple cat balls in there as well. Sitting on the chair in that room is the EDI plus meter, which picks up on temp uh, temperature changes, air pressure changes, as well as vibration, EMF. So if there's any environmental changes in that room, it's gonna let us know. You guys ready to take off and leave this house empty for about an hour? Yes. All right, let's do it. We're leaving. We conduct these abandonment sessions to see what paranormal activity occurs inside the allegedly haunted buildings that we investigate when they're completely empty. We've been doing these abandonment sessions on our investigation for over a decade, and sometimes it seems like someone is very interested in our equipment. And tonight was no different. But on this occasion, we were surprised by who takes interest. We spent 12 hours in Bill's house for this investigation and never once saw this cat with our own eyes while we were there. Where it was hiding, we have no idea. But as soon as we leave for abandonment, the evasive feline spends the whole hour exploring the house. The unfortunate part of it is that our cameras didn't capture anything that couldn't be explained by our furry adventurer. and no part of the house was left out, not even the closets. And two minutes before we arrive back at the house, like a stealthy ninja, the cat returned to its basement hiding spot, and we didn't see it again for the rest of the night. So we officially have, back in our arsenal, back in our repertoire, the plasma ball. So we have that running to charge up the environment, but in doing so, that means we can't run any sort of static detection like REM pod or the Mel, uh, the Mel REM. We have the- Okay, there, okay. Dave, you're directly behind Ryan, right? Oh, wait, no, you're over there. Okay, Ryan, there's something that's going on to your right. Right by the stairs here. Yeah, it's not. It's yeah. It's not there now, but it was. Were you standing next to me? 
and it would have been like right here. Yeah. That's why I thought Dave was standing over there whenever he popped over from the other side. Oh, no, wait, that's not Dave. I kind of got a weird feeling down here at the end of this hallway. Do you? Yeah. Hello? What the hell is that? Yeah, I got, I, I'm mapping you, Dave, but then there's something. Now it's creeping down the floor. Not you, Ryan. What's in front of me? Is there anything? Just this closet door. If you're here, can you go up and touch this uh, box? Make the lights light up. It'll go from green to yellow to orange to red. We did, Pam, we rolled your audio, right? Yes. So wait, what'd you say? Whoa, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You heard that, didn't you? That sounded like a little kid's voice. Yeah. I didn't hear, ooh. It went. I just got goosebumps <laughs> on my legs. Yeah. It went, hmm, hmm. It I sounded like it. it was in his room behind me here. We did, Pam, we rolled your audio, right? Yes. We did, Pam, we rolled your audio, right? Yes. So wait, what'd you say? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was like. I, oh, I didn't hear it. What yeah, I'm covered in cold chills. I just told you there was a little kid. Remember, I said it was down on the floor. Oh yeah. It was that little. It was like little tiny. Right down here. Oh, you did. You said it was a little small figure. Yeah. Or is there a child here? Want me to go in? Okay. Yep. Whose voice did we just hear? I hope that we pick that up. I know that was one of the clearest voices that I've heard in a long time with my ears. Can you swow? I saw that. Did you see it's like something huge popped up right in front of you there, yeah, Pam. Over here. Yeah, this is funky. I can't I can't see anything and then it's backwards. <laughs> now I know why you fall all the time, Dave. Yeah. Do you want to switch? No, I'm good. Okay. I'll let you know when it gets too heavy. Okay. All right. Well, let's hit, you want to head into Bill's room? Yeah, let's go into Bill's room and see what Remember that music is in there. If you want to listen to it, you just got to step in front of it. Pam's got a camera there that'll take your picture if you stand in front of her. When I count down from five, can you step right in front of her? Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Bill says that you peek around the corner and you watch him sleep and you stand over William's bed and watch him as well. Can you come forward and tell us who you are and what you want? With this family? Bill's given us permission to be here. Who is the spirit that's been messing around with Bill in here? We want to experience what Bill experiences. So can you show us what you show him? All right, guys, so we're getting ready to do the Estes session. Ryan is getting set up. He's going to be laying on Bill's bed. Pam and I are going to be asking questions from mid-level or lower level of the house here. And uh, we're going to see what happens. We're going to see if any anybody wants to communicate. Uh, 
Okay, so if there are any spirits in the house here with us, again, my name is Dave. This is Pam. And in the bedroom back there, that's not Bill, that's our friend Ryan. And Bill told us that you are roaming around the house, showing yourself to him. And his son. Is there somebody in the hall outside Ryan's room or Bill's room? If there is, can you go talk to Ryan and then he'll repeat what you say? Do you feel that? Hmm. I just felt like a... Oh, jeez. No. Like ice cold air. You don't feel that? Uh-uh. Uh, something for a little bit. Is, are we? Oh yeah. You feel it was. That? It yeah. was a full sentence. It was kind of creepy. Is this? It's like right here. It's. It's not here. It's. Oh, I got goosebumps. Yeah, I do too. Can you tell Ryan? Is this you making this cold right here? Um, no hands or feet. That's strange. Do you know Bill? Yeah. yeah. How did you know Bill? What? How did you know Bill? How do you know him? Do you feel like you have an attachment to Bill? That was weird. It was, it was, it was like a whistle. It's really important that you... The questions that we ask... So Bill can get answers. Sounds good. Go talk to Ryan if it sounds good. You got one. You got one. Bill's just confused about why you're here. I'm going to switch spirit boxes. Okay. So once again, we're, we're just going to ask you some questions. And we want you to answer Ryan, if you can. Can you tell Ryan what your name is through the radio he has? What? I said, could you tell Ryan what your name is through the radio? Bill is confused about who you are and why you are here. Um, man's voice, deep man's voice, couldn't make it out. This voice is speaking so fast, and in the moment, I can't make it out. But this just shows you the two reasons why we record the Spirit Box audio during the Estes Method sessions. One, so you can listen to the responses as well, to totally immerse yourself in the experience. And two, so we can review voices that we don't understand in the moment. On review, after Dave asks for the name of whatever entity is inside Bill's house, it sounds to me like this deep man's voice says his name, David Gear. Tell us what you hear in the comments below. Also around this time, our infrared camera light begins to flash unexplainably. We can't be sure if this is a mechanical malfunction or something drawing energy from the light, but this subtle flashing will continue, and at times get worse. Who, what, what's your name, sir? How do you know Bill? I want or I won. Okay, if it says I want. What do you want? Okay. 
Bill asked us for our help, so we want to help him, but we can't until you help us. So you need to go talk to Ryan. Is there a reason that your spirit is in this house with Bill? Do you understand that Bill doesn't want you here? It's 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 like footsteps. I can hear. It sounds like it's coming from this room. Are you in William's room? William. (gasps) What? What? I got goosebumps. Me too. Thank you. That that's how you can communicate with us. Do you see how that happened? That are, was too cool. Are you in William's room? Yeah. <gasps> right at the time that it was a noise. Yeah. Okay, now now that you can hear us and you know how it works, what is your name? Yeah. Well, then go ahead and tell us. We've been asking you. Now's your chance. Like Dave said, you're not you might not get get another chance. So you need to communicate with us. Tell us what's going on. Tell us your story. Tell Ryan your story. Sounded like a very aggravated female said what? Was that you again that just made that noise? Think so? Deep man's voice. We'd love to talk to you if you could come to the top of the stairs here. Need to leave? No, we're not going to leave until you answer some more questions. Are you getting mad that we're here? Um, male voice just came through, couldn't make it out. Who are you? That's all, that's all we really want to know, is what your name is. Edgar. Okay, Edgar, why are you here? What do you want with Bill and his family? Dad. But can you go into the room Ryan's in? There's a round device, and if you touch it, it'll light up. It's kind of loud. It has a little, it's kind of glowing red. Can you try and touch that in that room with Ryan? Edgar, was this your property? If that's who we're speaking to, was this your land? I'm waiting or been waiting. What are you waiting for? Uh, it's someone's here, or I think it said someone's here. Who's here? But it was like a whisper. Are we too close now? Are you, are you upset that we moved a little closer? (laughs) Need to leave? You don't have to stay here. No, you you don't have to stay here if you're... You can leave at any time. We have... What? Did you smell that? 
No. What are you smelling? Like real strong cologne or like... Four. Four. Like a potpourri, but I just, it just, I've been sitting here, I didn't smell. Uh-uh. You don't have to stay here to protect. Whore again? To protect Or whores? It may have been whores. You're free to move on. Mm. Taking the headphones off. Okay. Is there somebody in this room here? I'm holding a device with a green light on it. Can you reach out and try and touch that for me? Whoa. That wasn't you? No. Okay. What'd you hear? Mm. Something in this back corner. We don't realize it at the time, but with the knowledge that we have now, this sound that Dave is hearing could be the cat. Because remember, when we came back to the house, the cat ran directly into this room and could still be hiding in here. Are you down here with us? Now's your chance to tell us your story and who you are. We came to try to help Bill. He needs to, he, he needs clarification he needs to understand who you are and why you're here and he doesn't want you here so you need to go you need to leave this family alone I gotta go get new dead light batteries because these ones are f***ing dead I don't want to freak you out. What do you mean? But when I turned around and I looked, it was like there was a face beside you. I've seen um, an actual face. It's been it's been pretty scary. It's the same height, and that's why I kept. You know, how sometimes when you, when you're looking at a bright light, and then you move, and it like, like if you're looking at the sun or whatever, you close your eyes, you open them, you still see that image of the sun. Yeah. That's why I thought, okay, whenever I saw your face, was it that? But it was right. I mean, it was right. It was like right there. That was weird. And then whenever I turned, did you see me keep turning my head? I was trying to like, okay, was that? Yeah. The reflection from that. Was it that? But it was just that one time it didn't happen again. That is weird. Huh. Was somebody standing beside me? Tell us your name, please. If you're upstairs, come downstairs with us. Bill said he sees you all the time in here. Your shadow. Who is he seeing? It's gone incredibly quiet. Yes. Very, very quiet. We continue to investigate for another 30 minutes with no further paranormal evidence or experiences. Nothing intelligence coming through the ghost tube either. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Nothing. Nothing even closely related or relevant to what we're talking about. And that's not just here, that's on the walkthrough. That was, that's all day, all night. Yeah. Yes. We're bothering you and you would like us to just leave you alone you can touch that and we will do just that we'll leave you alone and after hours of investigating we've only captured 
one possible unexplained voice. We did. Pam, we rolled your audio, right? Yes. We did. Pam, we rolled your audio, right? Yes. Say, wait, what'd you say? Whoa, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. And a few strange responses during the Estes Method spirit box session. Are you in William's room? William. <gasps> what? But if Bill is experiencing the shadows and ghostly phenomena, the house may not be the cause of his experiences. He may have an attachment. Or the emotional turmoil and stress from his divorce might have exploded into negative manifestations of his own fears. Also known as psychokinesis or PK energy. Either way, this problem is going to take time to solve. But a great place to start is to cleanse the negative energy from the house. And to do this, we'll be using smoke from an ancient wood that dates back to the Inca era in the 15th century. When it was later discovered by the Spanish monks, they gave it the name Palo Santo, meaning holy wood. For centuries, it's believed negative energies, spirits, and entities can be cleansed from houses and land by the smoke of the holy wood. So we'll walk around the whole house, bringing the smoke to each room. If there's anyone in Bill's room, anyone who hides, stalks him, any oppressive energies or negative energies that weigh him down, leave this house and don't return. This is a place of light and positivity now. To try and clear the house not just of spirits, but the negativity of the past, so that Bill and his family can look forward to a positive future. Leave this family alone. Leave Bill and William and anyone who enters alone. You are not allowed to be here. You have to leave them alone and never return. But it's important to remember that we're only guests here in Bill's house, and we aren't exorcists or clergy. And if the negativity persists or returns, so too may the activity. So when we leave, we'll leave behind a care package for Bill to use to liberate himself from any future hauntings. Inside the package are a bottle of holy water and blessed salt, which were blessed by a bishop in the Catholic Church. Two more sticks of the Palo Santo Hollywood for him to continue to clear negative spirits or energies from his house, as well as two smudge sticks of sage for him to cleanse himself of anything that may have attached itself to him. But most of all, we hope that our investigation here has brought some clarity into Bill's life, and we hope that what we did here had a positive influence on the lives of everyone who lives under this roof. But for now, our work here is done, and we'll stay in contact with him in hopes that he'll update us on the status of his situation. I believe a lot of these people that lived here wouldn't want to leave this house after they've passed on. Her spirit came back to this house, and maybe that's why she still haunts this place. Did you hear that? No. I just heard movement out here on the stairs. Dude, that's weird. There could be energy trapped in these walls. If there's an elemental here, can you show us that you're here? How many of you are there? I think that just said many. You're dead. Uh -huh. Did you just go, No. I heard that right there in my head. Right behind you. My God. Are you holding hands with Dave right now? All right, Ryan, we are now in Oberlin, Ohio, in what has been deemed the Inspiration House. 
And this house was built by the Penfield family many, many, many years ago. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, this beautiful and historic mansion was built in 1870 by Isaac and Herbert Penfield. Now, they were a father-son duo of carriage makers. Isaac built the house for his son Herbert and his wife Sarah to have a home to raise their family. Now, as the story goes, that didn't last too long. Tragedy struck. It's very widely speculated that Sarah may have passed away inside the house. They were only able to have one child when they had planned to fill this house with children. A lot of people believe Sarah is one of the many former residents that still haunt this house. From what we read, behind you there, Dave, in the parlor, there was a group of investigators that actually reported seeing a woman peeking down the stairs at them as they were sitting in there. Very bizarre, very weird, and a very interesting start to this haunting. Wow. There's definitely an energy up here. It is creepy up here. Is there any specific place up here that you want to focus on first? Well, before we go to the back part of the house here, because you can tell from the way that the house is actually built that the original house ends right after this bathroom behind you. But there was a family that lived here. The Worcester family actually moved in here in 1901. Two brothers and a sister. You had James Worcester, Harry Worcester, and then you had Roxy Ackleson, who used to be Roxy Worcester. Okay. Now, they moved in here when they were much older, later in life. Roxy's husband had actually died. He was a doctor. So they all moved in together into this house on South Street here in Oberlin, Ohio. Roxy outlived all of them. James and Harry both died. Roxy continued to live here. Roxy's son even died, and Roxy continued to live here. But eventually, Roxy would pass away inside this house of a cerebral brain hemorrhage. And Roxy is one of the people, one of the spirits that they believe to still be here inside the Inspiration House. Very tragic. I mean, she watched everyone that she loved die. But that is the tragedy of old age. Everyone wants to live a long life, but one of the consequences of living a long life is you outlive everyone that you know and love. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine the pain and the sadness that that would cause. And maybe if her spirit isn't feeling that, the residual energy of that time in her life may be trapped within these walls. Yeah, that is very true. All of that energy and all of those emotions and feelings soaked up into these walls and just one of the many pieces of the puzzle to this place. Let's head back yeah. behind you here in this room. Wow. So you have three bedrooms up here that we're probably gonna wanna focus on, on this old section of the house. You have what they call the king room, but then there is also this tiny little room that kind of reminds me of like a child's bedroom. That brings me to something that I also read about this place, and that is they see the spirit of a young boy running around this house. <laughs> Now, they don't know if it's a boy from the history of the house or maybe one of the objects that they have downstairs, which we'll see in a minute, may have brought this boy in. But people see this boy. People have heard this boy playing with the toys and moving throughout the house. Hmm. Lilac room, queen bed. Now, after Roxy passed away, the house was then inhabited by James, his daughter, Nellie and she actually had two sons and a daughter in the house as well. So continuing that family aspect, this house is not the normal tragic haunting that you think of. It is that welcoming, warm energy that is so strong that I believe a lot of these people that lived here wouldn't want to leave this house after they've passed on. But Nellie did pass away in the house, and her daughter, Helen, then resided in the house until 1965. And her story is probably one of the more tragic stories associated with this property. 
because in 1965, just about a block away from the house, she got into a fatal car. Did you hear that? No, what? I just heard movement out here on the stairs. Hello? Nellie? Helen? Did you hear me telling your story? Because in 1965, just about a block away from the house, she got into a fatal car. Did you hear that? No, what? I just heard movement out here. She got into a fatal car. Did you hear that? No, what? I just heard movement out here. Nellie, Helen, if that was you out there on the stairs, or if that's Sarah, whoever can hear me, my name is Ryan and this is Dave, and we're here to speak to you tonight in hopes that you'll tell your story. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, if I lived in this house and I got into a fatal car wreck, like one block over that way, when you're in that kind of traumatic experience and you're hurt like that, even if it's just a little bit before you pass away, what's the one thing that you're gonna want? You're gonna wanna go home. So maybe as she was dying, her spirit came back to this house. Right. And maybe that's why she still haunts this place. Into the study. Into the study. The one thing that I love about how beautifully this home is decorated is one of the stories and one of the people they believe may still be here is an artist and art historian named C. Kenneth Dubois. He lived in the house for almost 20 years. The only reason he had to move out of here was when they moved him to a nursing home because his health was failing and he passed away in that nursing home. But that doesn't mean that he didn't come home like we talked about. In that moment, the thought may cross your mind, I just wanna go home, I just wanna go home. It's possible that all his years, 20 years in this house may have brought him back here. All right, down at the end of the hall here to the right is the old mayor's office. Yes, Arden Taylor Dale, and I didn't mention him when we were upstairs. He actually lived here after the Penfields, and he was the mayor of Oberlin. He served almost two terms. Not only did he live in this house, but this room right here was his office, his at-home office. He eventually did pass away of cancer, but his office is now the display room. Oh, wow. That is really cool. This music box, apparently, they don't know if that boy that they see running around this house is attached to this music box, but this music box has been known to play on its own for no reason, and multiple people have experienced this music box playing music when there's no one near it. It just starts playing. So they believe it's from the 1950s or 60s, but it would be very cool if that started playing music tonight while we were here. Yes, it would be. Oh. <laughs> Gotta love basements. You Creepy, do. haunted basements. <clears throat> Watch your head, Dave. As if I should be telling you, I should be the one who's being told to watch my head. Hey, I don't really have to worry about it. <laughs> oh, wow. I saved a story for last down here because it's not really connected to the house itself, but rather the property. The property itself actually used to be a part of the James Fitch farmstead or homestead and is related to an incident that happened here in Oberlin in September of 1858, 12 years before this house ever existed. There was a man named John Price who had escaped slavery in the South and he was living in Oberlin. And on September the 13th, 1858, slave hunters from Kentucky came here to Oberlin, beat him, abducted him and kidnapped him, trying to take him back to the South. Now, luckily, the citizens of Oberlin banded together. They ended up distracting those slave hunters and even confronting them until they could get John Price away from them. And then, he was brought to the James Fitch homestead to be hidden. So this 
land that is now occupied by the Inspiration House would have been a part of the Fitch property where John Price was hidden before he was taken up to Canada. So you have a lot of historical events that happened here in Oberlin, and this house is right at the center of a lot of them. Whether it was here or the land that it sits on was here, there could be energy trapped in these walls. And tonight, we're here at the Inspiration House to see if we can communicate with any of its former residents that are said to still haunt this property. And we're also here to see if we can capture any paranormal activity or paranormal phenomenon on camera. Are you ready to get started, Dave? I am more than ready. We've been wanting to do this one for a while, so let's go knock it out. Let's go, let's set up abandonment. Let's do it. You guys, that music, musical horse is going off right there. That is kind of bizarre. I mean, Dave was setting up this camera and he said that this musical horse right here was going off. I mean, vibration does not set it off. So, kind of strange, but we are getting ready to leave for abandonment. The Inspiration House is wired with cameras. We are ready to leave it completely empty for about an hour to see what happens when this house is completely empty. So we have a camera in here in the display room pointing out through this way and into the other part of the parlor. This is the toy that they say continually goes off and plays music, the one that they say a little boy might be attached to, this little music box that looks like a TV. We decided to set up our own music box that he might be able to use or anyone might be able to use a little bit more easily. The paranormal music box is set up right here in the doorway. If anyone walks in here or out of this room, we'll know it. Now, right out here in the hallway, pointing down this direction and up the stairs and into the parlor, we have a camera set up, the Mel meter's sitting on the stairs. We heard the story of Sarah poking her head around or some woman poking her head around the corner and possibly watching the investigators that were down below. So hopefully we can capture that or any sort of paranormal activity within that first floor area. Up on the second floor in the old part of the house, we have an action cam that is set up shooting all three of the bedroom doors on that second floor. We not only have the EDI plus meter up there, but we have motion sensors pointing into each of the two larger bedrooms. So if there's movement in the bedrooms, it'll set off those motion sensors and we will know it because those motion sensors are loud. We also have a camera set up in the back part of the house on the second floor. That back part of the house is now considered the creator studio or the creator suite. And we have a camera set up in that little study area with the bookshelves pointing back towards the back bedroom and kitchen area. Let's leave Dave and see. Dave? Yes. <laughs> you ready to leave? I'm more than ready. See what happens when the inspiration house is completely empty. Let's do it. Hit them with it. It's been a minute. All right, here we go, everybody. And before I do this, just know that we have brand new, we're leaving merch, so go get you some. All right, um, we're leaving. Too dramatic. <laughs> I had to say Jason's line.
Anybody from the Penfield family here? Sarah, if you're here, can you walk in, in across the bedroom up there? So we are ready to start the first session here at the Inspiration House. We have multiple pieces of equipment scattered throughout this first floor and multiple cameras to capture anything that might happen. Up above our heads also, we set up again the motion sensors on the second floor. So if anything moves up there in front of those motion sensors, it is going to alarm and we're going to know that we need to go up there and see what's going on. So yes. This is gonna be interesting. We're also on this session going to be testing out a brand new program from our friends, Amy and Jared, over at Amy's Crypt. The creators of Ghost Tube have unleashed a brand new investigative tool that they call Seer. Now it works much like the original Ghost Tube using the magnetometer and the device to pick up fluctuations in magnetic fields that then generate words from a database. But instead of speaking the words, this program runs them through an AI image generator and creates images that are corresponding to those words that are related to those words. So it is their take on almost like psychic mediumship. And I thought what better place to try this out than at the Inspiration House owned by renowned psychic Michelle Belanger. You ready, Dave? I'm ready. If you uh, haven't tried out Seer yet, go download it and give it a try. We're about to see what it's like. So if there's anyone here, Sarah, Mary, Nellie, Helen, the mayor, James, anyone who lived in this house who would love to speak to us. My name is Ryan, this is Dave. We're here tonight to help tell your story, and we have lots of things that are going to help do it, but we're trying out this new thing to see if you can use it to show us an image of your life. We've got a guy in a tent. Two guys in a tent. Huh. Could it have been the boys from the South? There was one that was a Civil War soldier fought in the Civil War, but that, to me, could be anything. It's just a tent. What was their name again? Penfield. Penfields, yeah. Are any of the members of the Penfield family here with us? Can you please come out and make yourself known to us? We have a bunch of devices around that you can use to... Sh What's wrong? I thought I heard like a hissing sound come up from up there. Would you like to do that? You can also sit down in any of these two chairs right here. This chair in front of me or that chair around the corner there. And there's some lights on it that'll turn on. I got a spike up to 0.2 on the metal when I said that. I mean, it's not that much of an EMF fluctuation, but... Sarah, it's speculated on how you actually passed away or whether you even passed away in this house. Could you settle that by showing us an image of it or telling us through the devices if or and or how you passed away? Oh, wow. Peacock feather on fire huh it's a very random image <laughs> it is don't be afraid to come out and speak with us we're going to be staying here all night so we would love to to know that you're here what about the mayor? Are you in your office back there?
Hmm. What? A woman with a necklace just popped up. It looks like a very elegant and extravagant lady wearing very beautiful earrings and a very beautiful necklace. Sarah, are you showing us an image of what you looked like? I'm gonna walk over here towards the display room. That's me. Mayor, can we come in? If you don't want me to come in, can you make that horse move again or make that music on the music box that, oh wow. I see what looks like, I don't even know what that is. Let me see. A saloon maybe? It kind of looks like a courtroom, which is interesting. Is it a courtroom? I don't know, it could have been a courtroom. Is that the mail? We were just in there for how long? And it... Footsteps. Yeah. Is that upstairs? Yeah. Sarah, was that you? Listen to how cool that music is. Are you sitting there in that chair? If you'd like one of us to sit down here and have a conversation with you, can you move the chair? That'll let me know. You might have heard our device make some beeping sounds. That's okay, that's what it's supposed to do. It won't hurt you. Hmm. Whoa. What? We've got an old time gentleman and lady sitting in front of a fireplace. Oh wow. They're sitting together in the chair. Are you showing us what your life was like here, Sarah? You and Herbert? If that's what you're showing us, can you set off one of these one of these lights? Is the little boy here? The one that they say people always see? And the one that always sets off this music? Wow. If that's who's here lighting the lights up is the little boy, can you light it up again? Just go over and grab a hold of it or knock it down. I want to hear what that music box sounds like right there. It's very weird. It's like a shadow of a little boy? Yeah. Dude. It's like a shadow of a little kid. Okay, that's weird. If this is the little boy, is this little boy that's here, did you live here? Or are you, a, are you did you come with one of these items, like this box, with this toy? The strange thing to me is at both times when the mail went off is after we left that room. It's very bizarre. It is. Let's go in here and sit down on the couch. Maybe they'll feel more comfortable if we're sitting. Okay. As compared to wandering around. Maybe they'd be more likely to talk. All right, we're just gonna sit down with you now, if that's okay. Would you, do you feel more comfortable now that we're just sitting? 
Dude. Oh, wow. We haven't even talked about that. We haven't even mentioned that. When we were doing reading on the history and on the claims of activity here at the Inspiration House, it says on their write-up about it that they believe that there could possibly be some sort of elemental here inside the Inspiration House. That's wild. Very weird that that word came through. Yeah. If there's an elemental here, can you show us that you're here? Maybe give us an idea of where you are or what you want? <laughs> wow. What? Come on, just a little bit more. Get as close to it as you can for me. Is this still recording? Whoa. That is insane. Was it recording? I don't know. It just now started recording again. If that wasn't recording the whole time, I swear. But it's recording now. It caught that. Whoa. Thank you very much. See, that's not too hard to do, is it? I'm going to get up just for a minute. You can keep going. Don't stop on Dave's account. Thank you. this just in case that thing goofs up thank you for doing that for us so you understand that we're not here to hurt you right is this the little boy if this is the little boy that likes to play with the music if you walk through the room to the left of Dave, down the hallway, and if you walk through the middle of that room, there's a box that will also play music. It's a lot easier to get it to play music than the other one, I'm sure. Could you try that out for us? What do you think, Dave? You ready to move some of these cameras around and get started with the, an SLS sweep upstairs? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go ahead and get the SLS cameras set up and let's do an SLS sweep of the second floor. Let's do it. Let's do it. SLS, here we come. That's interesting. Mel meter was just going off. Interesting. Which is the only device to go off. So far tonight, I mean, this is just the second session, so. Yeah. Let's go down and get the SLS camera and see what, see what happens. Okay. All right, let's do this. All right, Ryan, you ready to start this SLS sweep? I am. We actually have this whole first floor wired with motion sensors, just like we did the second floor during that last session. And we already have two cameras rolling upstairs, so. And a huge thank you to our friend Pam for letting us borrow her SLS. Let's head up. We're coming upstairs now to take your picture like we talked about earlier. Is there anyone that would like a portrait? Sarah?
stand right here. <laughs> Never mind. You don't. I, I don't want to take your. I don't want to get your portrait in the bathroom. <laughs> Just kidding. Stand right here for me. Let's step into this. That's me. Sarah. Mary. Helen, Nelly, James. C. Kenneth Dubois, Herbert. Yeah. We're gonna do some old fashioned ghost box here, y'all. Yes. Is there anyone here with us? Whose voice did we just hear? Whoa. We're fine, how are you? Can I ask who we're speaking to? Ryan is holding a radio, and that's how you can communicate with us. Just use it like a microphone. Please tell us your name. Yes. Yes what? What is your name? Nothing in here. Hello? Is C. Kenneth Dubois here? Mary, are you still here? We'd love to hear your story. Can you come can you come close to us and tell us how long you lived in this house? Mary, are you still here? Mary, are you still here? Can you tell me what happens after we die? Can you tell us if there's anything beyond this life? That was a woman's voice. I don't know what that said. It sounded like it said love or something like that. Love something. Do you love being here? Who is this woman that we're speaking to? So we know your name. My name's Ryan. That's Dave. What's yours?
It's that same voice. Mary, is that you? You said you loved something. Does Mary love art? Whoa. But it's a it sound like it's a Dave there. Really? That's Dave there. Can you say my name? How many of you are there? I think that just said many. Oh, really? How many? Give us a number if you can. That gave me chills. Twenty? That's a lot. How, why are there twenty people here? Did you all used to live here? Yes. Did you hear that? I went, yes. Does everyone that ever lives in this house come back here after they pass away? Love again. Can you go stand right next to Dave? Here, come stand beside me. Give me a hug. Whoa. What? Literally one just appeared beside you, right beside you, reaching out and grabbing your hand, dude. Really? I swear. It's touching, it just tried to touch your, it just tried to touch your face. <laughs> you can, you can do whatever you want. Are you right there beside Dave? Do you like Dave? It's whole, it's, it just grabbed your hand, man. Really? Yeah, and when you pulled away, it kept reaching for it. Sorry, I'll put my hand back out. Are you holding hands with Dave right now? It's okay, you're allowed. Still there? Mm-hmm. It's like reaching out and touching your hand. Oh, it just disappeared. It just disappeared. Out of nowhere, it just vanished. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you so much for standing there and holding my hand and letting me know that you're here. That was, that was really cool. That, that was probably one of the coolest SLS figures that we've caught in a long time. That's awesome. Thank you for doing that. And what's weird is, is we, kept, we got the word love and it just seems like they love, like it was just, it, the, the whole time, I can't wait for you to see that footage because the whole time it was like reaching for your hand. And then, and then when you'd pull your hand away, it would try and reach out and touch your face. Oh, wow. And then you put your hand back and then it would immediately like go back to trying to touch your hand. Oh, that's creepy. I mean, just because I can't see you, that that's a little bit creepy to me, but I appreciate you. Is that what you're all about? Are you all about love here? Ryan and I both come with respect only to talk to you. Can you please tell me who that was that was trying to grab Dave's hand? Give me your name, please. Ooh, I got chills on my left side. Or excuse me, my right side. Like over here, this just got really cold. Are you standing beside Ryan? Are you right in between us? Look, look at this. All you gotta do is try that and it'll let us know you're here. 
Dude, this is this is gonna sound so weird, but I feel like someone's touching the left, like the left part of my neck. Really? Yeah. Can you and just see, like over here is where I feel it now. Are you right here beside me? <gasps> Whoa. Clear as day. Clear as day. Thank, Thank you. you. Is this Sarah or Nellie or Mary or Helen? When we woke up this morning, we thought we were going to be investigating a different location. We didn't know we were coming to the Inspiration House tonight. Did you know we were going to be coming here? I don't really feel whatever it was over there now. You got it? Yes. Can you stand in the doorway there and let me take your picture? Whoa. That was me. Oh, was it? Yeah, I hit my leg on that. Oh, okay, you bumped the table. Yeah, my bad. What? Did you just go there? No. Mark it, I heard that right here in my... I'm telling you, I heard that right there in my Right ear. behind you? It was between us. You heard that? And I was running the spirit box, so I didn't hear it. But you heard someone say your name, and then the mel meter started going off right here behind me. And that was not me bumping into it or moving near it or anything. What? Did you just go there? No. Are you upset because you because Dave's walking out of the room? Do you want Dave to stay in here? I don't know. That was that was plain as day. I hope the camera captured it or your audio captured it. Me too. Because I had the spirit box going right beside me, so I'm not sure whether it would have picked it, whether I know my mic wouldn't have picked it up. Right. You know what's very odd? I expected that this front part of the house that is the oldest would be the most active on the second floor, but we haven't captured anything up here. All of the activity and that amazing moment with the SLS camera and Dave heard a very clear disembodied voice saying his name, that all happened in the back part of the house, which as far as I can tell looking at the architecture that was built at a later date, but it just goes to show you. Just because something's older doesn't mean that's where the activity is going to be. Yeah. In a place this historical, in a place that's so charged full of energy like the Inspiration House, it could happen in any part of the building. I don't know how I feel about whatever the figure was reaching out trying to grab my hand. I did ask for that. I asked for a hug. It's, it's, it's interesting, you know, that that happened when I asked that but nothing else has happened from the SLS, you know? I think Dave has a friend. <laughs> what do you think we stick him in the basement alone with the spirit box to do an Estes session? See if someone wants to come talk to him while I ask questions. You think you'd like that, Dave? Uh, I don't know, as long as there's no spiders, <laughs> then I'm good, then I'm good. Uh, let's give it a try. See what happens. Let's do it. All right, so we decided that we were going to do a session in the basement, but instead of just doing a normal session, we are going to have Dave perform an Estes Method spirit box session, but do it a little differently. Instead of me being in the room with him asking questions, I'm gonna sit upstairs in the parlor while Dave is performing the Estes down here because I want to see if the questions that I ask upstairs 
correlate with his answers down here in the basement. So maybe some of them may even answer me directly. Do the floors and earshot and other things that limit human abilities actually apply to the paranormal and the, and the strange communication that we deal with. So this is going to be interesting. Are you ready to sit down here alone, Dave, and listen to that? I'm ready. We also have the REM pod back here behind me. So if anything goes off or anything sneaks up behind Dave, maybe they'll trigger that. Who knows? We will see. So I'm going to grab that camera from the kitchen as I go through, and I'm going to head to the parlor. Okay. Uh, I'll let you know when I'm there. Okay. Turning off the lights. Rolling on ghost tube. I'm also going to roll on ghost tube because I want to see if maybe what I, what answers I get through here correlate with whatever Dave says downstairs. So let's give it a shot. Okay, ready when you are, Mr. Gear. All right, I'm gonna put on my headphones okay. now. All right, Dave is downstairs. You remember Dave, you held his hand upstairs. You said his name upstairs. He's now alone in the basement. And he has these things on his ears. They may look strange to you, but they're attached to a box, the same box that you were talking through up there. And I would love it if you could answer my questions through him. Eight. Is that how old you are? Is this the little boy? Or are there eight of you here? My name is Ryan. If you don't remember, you didn't hear me, and that's Dave down there, if you've never met him either. If there's someone in the basement that we haven't talked to yet. Can you tell us your name? Sarah, I heard you like peeking at people down the stairs. Are you up there? Peace. Huh. Are you at peace? Three. Hmm. Eight, three. We're here to learn about your life and to let you speak to us and to whoever would want to hear your story. In the room? Are you in the room with me or are you in the room with Dave? Which room are you in? I'd love to come find you. Frightened. You don't have to be fr- You don't have to be frightened. That just went off. Was that you that did that? It was not. Are you serious? I just asked if that was them that touched that, and it said it was not. <laughs> wow. That is about as a direct of an answer as you can get. Hey, was that you? Smile. N no, that wasn't me that did that. Do you know who did that? I'm something or other. What are you? But do you mind if I ask you some somewhat personal questions? Yeah. 
Seven. Yes. Well, what I was wondering is, after, after you pass away, can you stay wherever you want? Is that a choice that you have? Is that a choice that you made? Are you happy here? Is there something- that Prisoner. You... Prisoner. Is there, is there a spirit or entity here that doesn't allow you to speak freely? That punishes you if you say the wrong thing? It's becoming very cold down here. Hello? Male voice? Hello? Who is this elemental, this entity, this energy that people pick up on? I'm not even quite sure how an elemental works. Water. Is that how the elemental got here with water? K. Yes or no? Is that how that el is that how that entity got here? Is through water? Lower your voice. Excuse me. I'll talk quieter. <laughs> I've never had that come through before. Do you need me to talk more quietly? Now. How many fingers am I holding up? Can you go tell Dave this number? Satchel. Yes. Stay with me. <laughs> uh. No way, that is so... It's us. <laughs> that was creepy. Do you want me to stay with you? I'm going to be staying here tonight. Excuse me, lower my voice. I'm going to be staying here tonight. How long do you want me to stay? You're dead. You're dead. Me? I'm dead? That's a little creepy, but am I the one that's dead and you're the one that's talking to me? I once heard this theory that there's multiple realities and dimensions and that we each continue to exist on within the reality and dimension that we survive and move on and continue, but there are there are realities and there are dimensions and there are situations where we have passed on. Do those ever overlap? Causing paranormal activity? I just heard something. Sounds like shuffling. I'm not sure where you are, but I feel like something approaching me. It's not me. Go talk to Dave. Okay, I just moved that camera so I know for a fact that it's getting that mail meter. I'm gonna walk over and start heading down to Dave. But I'm not going to pull him out just yet. Going down? Oh my God. As I just said, I'm going down to the basement. Dave just heard going down. 
yes, I am going down. Follow me down and maybe you can talk to Dave a little better. Coming down. Tell Dave that I'm behind him. Again, I feel somebody or something approaching. He has good senses, doesn't he? Come over here. Is that better? I know one thing. What is that? What is that one thing? Can you knock something over? Knock something over upstairs or down here, anywhere. Hey, Dave. Oh, wow, he's under. I do not want to scare the shit out of him. He does not even know that I'm down here. Dave. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know how else to get you out. I told the camera, I was like, if I tap him on the shoulder, he's going to freak out. Even <laughs> You're going to freak out. <laughs> oh. But you were under, and I'm like, I have no other way of pulling you out. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Whew, that scared the crap out of me. Well, basically, I figured you've been under now for like 35 minutes. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, it's probably about time. But I'm going to go ahead and shut this off here. And then you do have very astute senses because the first time you said you felt like someone was approaching, yeah, I was upstairs. The second time you said you felt like someone was approaching, that was me coming into the room through the door. Oh, really? Yeah. I told the camera, I was like, he has very astute senses. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I've definitely felt it twice. So. Yeah. First one wasn't me. What second... do you mean? What do you mean? All right, Justin Bieber, calm down. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> At this point, we've covered the entire house. We've caught some very cool evidence. Um, do you want to gather this stuff up? And then we'll set up a couple cameras while we sleep. Yeah. And see if anything happens while we are sleeping. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get ready for bed. Let's do it. All right, everyone. It is well early into the morning i don't even know what time it is we have to sleep here so who knows what's going to happen while we are asleep or maybe even while we are falling asleep so what better place to set up cameras to see what happens now i'm here in the front bedroom in the front of the house but remember in the back of the house dave had a figure on the sls camera that looked like it was grabbing his hand and trying to touch his face so i wanted to make sure that he took that bedroom it's been an interesting night here in the Inspiration House, and I'm glad that we got to come here and finally check it out. Uh, but for the rest of the night, it is bedtime. Going to leave this camera rolling. Going to leave a REM pod set up and uh, see what happens while we're asleep. See if the spirits of the Inspiration House are still active while we are asleep. Let's see, we'll see if anything happens, but I'm gonna go get ready for bed, finish everything up, and then I'm gonna roll on this camera again when it's time for us to fall asleep. Let's see what happens. All right, well, it is time for bed. It is almost 6 a.m. here at the Inspiration House, so I'm going to set this audio recorder right over here by the door with the mail meter and try and fall asleep here. 
We'll see what happens. All right, well, it is daytime, it is morning, it is about 12 o'clock noon here at the Inspiration House and we have officially finished. What a really cool place to get to even just spend the night, let alone investigate the paranormal. Yeah, we had a lot of very interesting things happen during the investigation and I'm excited to go back and see what happened overnight while we were asleep. Maybe something happened there. Yeah, maybe it did. We're not sure about it, but I will tell you what, the coolest part of the night, I think, for me, was whenever that figure popped up on the SLS camera beside you on the second floor, and it looked like they were trying to hold your hand. It looked like they were trying to grab a hold of you, something. It was very weird. It just shows that the Inspiration House here still has energies and spirits, and it still has people that are wanting to contact and interact with people yes so but we 100 percent recommend staying at the inspiration house because this was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun super unique place definitely should come and check it out she said there is something creepy about the second floor of this house she genuinely believes that this house that she bought is haunted I have a very weird vibe in here. I don't know anything about this house, but I'm getting the vibe of like an elderly couple. That's really bizarre. What in the world? It just stopped recording for no reason. He's recording. He's recording. Whoa. What if I count down? Can you sit down on the couch? Ooh, that was creepy. You can move on. Dead. Do you make Pam feel uncomfortable in this house? So we were contacted by a lady named Pam who genuinely believes that this house that she bought is haunted. She doesn't live here. And in fact, she said that she's planning on tearing the house down. She said there is something creepy about the second floor of this house. Yeah, supposedly there's an energy, uh, like you said, up on the second floor that terrifies everybody that comes in here. Yeah, she has friends that go up to that second floor and without her even telling them about this strange energy that she's felt up there, they automatically say that there's something off about it. So she asked us to come in tonight and investigate the house and see if we can pinpoint what might be causing the energy. And it is right up here. Oh yeah, there it is. Definitely has a weird vibe. It does, it definitely has that apprehensive, creepy energy when driving up to it. And that could just be the way that it looks, but either way, this should be interesting tonight. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for this. Do we just this yeah. way? Yeah, I think we just pull right up here. Let's head in and do an initial walkthrough completely uninfluenced by any sort of information. She didn't tell us which room it was that she felt uncomfortable about. No. We don't, we've never been inside the house before, so no. let's walk in and see what we can find or pick up on. Let's do it. Wow. 
You doing okay there, Dave? Uh, no. <laughs> like I told Ryan, I might be built like a polar bear, but I don't like the cold. <laughs> and it is cold today, guys. It is gonna be about a real feel of zero degrees tonight. So, and this house doesn't have heat. So we're gonna have a lot of fun. This is our first time walking in here. You ready, Dave? Yes. Let's go in. Very much ready. The current homeowner didn't feel comfortable to be interviewed for this episode, and she said her suspicions of an unexplained presence within the house stem from two photos being taken outside and an unwelcoming feeling that is experienced by almost everyone who has entered this house since she purchased it. But before we can get into that, we have to look at the historical research we did into the property. One of our favorite historians, Matt Cumberledge, sent us this map of the Cedar Hill District of Fayette County, Pennsylvania from 1872, and it shows this property being owned by a J. Johnson. Now almost all the Johnsons in Fayette County, Pennsylvania were farmers, and from our research we discovered a Joseph, John, and a Jacob Johnson, who could have resided on the land at that time. The current house was built in 1893, and despite a few cosmetic changes, it remains fairly original. So original, in fact, that the house, to this day, doesn't even have a bathroom, making it a very unique and historical home. I have a very weird vibe in here. I don't know anything about this house, but I'm getting the vibe of, like, an elderly couple. Not that I'm a psychic or anything like that, but that's just the immediate vibe I'm picking up on in here. Yes, and the funny thing is, is Pam doesn't know anything about this house. Pam, the owner, doesn't know anything about this house either. But what she did hear was that back behind the house, in the line of trees back there, that there used to be an old one-room schoolhouse. And it was rumored that that one-room schoolhouse burned down. She's mm -hmm. had the impression and she's even seen children, the spirits of children, around this house. Pam bought the house for the land and didn't even enter the house when purchasing it. She remained focused on the outside property, building a fence for her dogs, and took two photos. The first one that confused her was a picture of her car that appears to be surrounded by a mist. And the second photo she took of the tree line and believes that she can see a small misty figure standing in the trees watching her. But in our research, we couldn't find any evidence in the county records of a one-room schoolhouse burning down at all. And from our 1872 map, we see the closest schoolhouse was at the other end of the road about a mile away. But the unexplained phenomena experienced here could have origins that trace back to the previous owners. Oh, wow. So this is the room that I guess anyone that's ever come here has felt uncomfortable in. But do you feel uncomfortable in there? Um, I don't know yet. Don't Horror. Know. Horror. I th to me, I felt like it was that other room at the very top of the stairs. Undecided. Over here? Yeah. It might be, I don't know. Or it could be this room, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out, because she said there was dead flies everywhere in this room. Not only have people gotten so uncomfortable that they've had to leave this room, but Pam has also noticed that it's the only room in the house where flies collect <laughs> and die on the windows. This only adds to her suspicions of this room being haunted. If there's anyone here, my name is Ryan and this is Dave and we're gonna be here tonight. Pam, the lady that owns the house, she's had strange feelings and experiences in here and captured strange images and she wants to know who you are. She asked us to come in here and find out who you are. So if you could come out and let us know, we'd greatly appreciate it. When we come in, we're gonna have a lot of lights. We're gonna have a lot of weird gadgets and gizmos that make noise and light up and we'll be back in in just a few frank 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 like the name the man's name frank if there's a man here named frank we'd love to talk to you or anyone else that's here we'd love to talk to you 
What do you think? You ready to get started? Yeah, the sun is going down. The horizon is turning orange. Let's go grab the cameras. Set up all of our night vision stuff, battery up the equipment and see what we can capture when this house is completely empty. Let's start this out just like we would any other investigation. Yeah. It's time for abandonment. Let's go. All right, so we are getting ready to leave this house empty with cameras rolling to see what is picked up or captured when no one is here, when it is completely empty. So we have four cameras rolling throughout the house, one here in the room that Pam and her friends say has the strangest and creepiest energy. We have the REM pod over here, one of the motion vibration activated cat balls right here behind Dave. And then over here on the second bedroom on the second floor, right here we have a camera set up pointing across this main bedroom and towards this doorway here okay headlights what does that say on the camera ah it stopped recording why the file's still here that's really bizarre Okay, let me restart this again. What in the world? Okay, rolling. All right, we are rolling again. Okay, we've not had that happen before when setting up for an abandonment. This camera right here just decided out of nowhere that it was going to completely stop recording. It didn't shut off, the file was not corrupted. It just stopped recording for no reason. That is very weird. It's not uh, full, is it? No. Five hours and three minutes of recording time left. Wow. Okay. And it's plugged in, so it wasn't the battery. Yeah. So that is very bizarre. That's, um, that's a first. But like I was saying, there's a camera over here in this room in the bedroom pointing across this way that is kind of acting as a tic-tac-toe cross pattern so that every part of this second floor is visible. And I mean every part of the second floor is visible because the stairwell also has an action cam at the bottom of it pointing up and there's a mail meter with the REM function turned on on the stairs. But in that, you can also see the kitchen. In the first level we have in the living room area, there's a camera set up with the EDI plus meter. So literally every room in this house has coverage right now. Oh yes. And if something happens, we're gonna know about it. So are you ready, Dave, to leave this house empty and to perform abandonment to huh? see if anything paranormal happens? Yes. All right, good luck. Oh. <laughs> hey, there's a cat ball there. And it broke. <laughs> That's going in the blooper reel. <laughs> it might even go in the episode. <clears throat> We're leaving! <laughs> oh my gosh. We're leaving! Got it. Got it. Let's get out of here. I got the keys. Let's go get something to eat. <sighs> Cutting my audio real quick before I forget. Okay. Before we left, I placed an LED flashlight on the kitchen table. This flashlight has three color settings, green, red, and blue. I left it on the green setting, 10 minutes into abandonment. The flashlight mysteriously turns off by itself, then slowly fades back on, this time in the blue setting. 
Every time this flashlight turns off, it will change colors when it turns back on. The question is, what caused the light to turn off? This is not a twistable mag light. This is a push button flashlight. So it turning off and back on has us scratching our heads. Then five minutes later, the ghost tube sitting on the kitchen table says, Fire. Warm. What's bizarre is that it's been rumored a schoolhouse burned down near this property and ghost tube spits out these two words back to back. Fire. Warm. That's either very relevant or a strange coincidence. But then everything in the house fell very quiet, except for the EDI plus meter detecting some environmental changes in the living room. Whoa, we're back. Bored. What did that just say? Bored. A oh, board. I thought it said door. <laughs> so we are rolling on the SLS camera here. As you can see, it is mapping Dave as a stick figure because the structure light sensor is using its depth sensor to find the shapes of objects and it has discovered that he is the shape of a human, so it mapped him. A lot of people believe that when you use this tool, that if something pops up, a stick figure mapping pops up, when there's nobody actually there, that it could be something paranormal. That's right. So, what was that? What was what? You didn't hear that? It sounded like something slid across the floor upstairs. I did not hear that, but we have a camera up there, so... And something just popped up on the SLS right over where I heard it from. And now it's gone. That's strange. Literally just turn this camera on. Wow. Well, if you're over there, Ryan's taking your picture. Can you show back up so he can get another one of you? You can also use this box in my hand to talk to us. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa! Did you hear that? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god. It is completely pitch dark and I just played <laughs> volleyball with myself with the spirit box in total darkness. <laughs> There's a box in my hand right here. I know it probably looked pretty silly as I just about dropped that. But you can use this. Ooh, that was creepy. Oh, it was creepy. It sounded like a kid. Let's go upstairs. But you can use this to speak to us. Is there someone upstairs? We're going to come up and see you. Can you say hello to us? Let's say evening. My name's Ryan, this is Dave, what's your name? If there's someone upstairs here, we don't mean you any harm. What's your name? My name is Ryan. We heard there was a schoolhouse behind the house here that may have burned down. Is that true? Who 
Whose house is this? Tell us your name. That was weird. It sounded like screaming. It did. That was weird. It sounded like screaming. It did. That was weird. It sounded like screaming. It did. Who's screaming? Is there someone that's upset? <laughs> Can't see. It is dark as <laughs> I'm coming in if I don't fall. What did that just say? Are we keeping you awake? Are you trying to go to sleep? Whoa. A lot of interference over here coming through this. Yeah. Spirit box. Guys, I am not even kidding you when I tell you that it is maybe 20 degrees up here. I mean, it is, and that's Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It is well below zero Celsius in this house. It is freezing. So, but we've come out here to try and capture paranormal evidence and that's exactly what we're gonna try and do. No weather stops paranormal quest. Although Dave is in a lot of pain, aren't you? <laughs> Careful. Sorry. Do you make Pam feel uncomfortable in this house? As always. As always? If there's someone in here, can you come up the stairs? I'd love to hear your footsteps if you could. Did you die in a fire in the school on this property? I can take your portrait. If you wanna play a joke on us, you can. You can knock stuff over. You can push things, grab things, throw things. Hell, you can even push us or knock us down if you'd like. As you saw from a few minutes ago, it's not hard to do. Both Dave and I have almost fallen in the past 10 minutes. You know, you don't have to be shy. You can come out and talk to us. We're gonna head downstairs if you'd like to follow us. It is your house, I believe. Ooh, what'd it say? Sound like it said mommy. Were you a student at the school? <laughs> Did you catch that? <laughs> yeah. Just missed the step. This is why I shouldn't be allowed to run the SLS camera in complete darkness. You remember what happened to me at the Stark Saloon? Yeah, enter that clip now. It went off again. <laughs> oh jeez, are you okay? Yep, I'm good. Here, give me the... <laughs> oh yeah. That's a bad one. Whoo, buddy. Oh, last one. Okay. Do you want to stay in here or do you want to go in the living room? Let's go in the living room. We've already done a little sweep in here, but we can always end back in here. Okay. When Dave first came in here, when we got here this afternoon, he said he felt like there was a, a married couple. He did, this, this, this. he did this? That's what it sounded like. There was an elderly married couple that he picked up on. Was this your home? 
There's... Say upstairs. Sounded like it said stairs. Stairs. Go to the stairs here. Are you on the stairs? He's recording. He's recording. Whoa. Did you hear that? Yeah, plain as day. I am recording, but... That's weird. That's weird. We're recording so we can see you. Is that okay? Picking up. Picking up. Hold on. Come back over here to the couch. It sounded like it said sit. Did you sit down? What if I count down? Can you sit down on the couch and appear on this portrait that I have in, that I have in front of me? Five, four, three, two, one. Take a seat. Whoa, something just popped up there. Really? It wasn't on the couch, it was to the left of the couch over there. Or to the right of the couch, I mean. By the door. Yeah, it was by the door. Is there someone over by the door? Just so you know, we were given permission to be in this house. If you'd like for us to leave, can you throw something at us so we know? Well, we did a full sweep of the house. Really, I mean, a couple of weird figures popped up very, very briefly. I think we should turn this off because we've been walking around with this now for about 44, 45 minutes or so. I think we should turn it off, maybe go up to the room where they say the weird stuff happens and maybe do an Estes Method spirit box session from that room. What do you think? Yeah, let's give it a try. Let's grab all of our stuff and head on up. Let's do it. There you go. Okay. Are oh, sh where's the blindfold? Whoa. Nobody's moving. Hello? That was weird. I can go get the blindfold. No, it's clear out in the car. Oh, is it? I'm just gonna pull my beanie down over my eyes. Okay. If there's anyone here that would like to talk to us, Dave is right there. And he can hear you if you speak through that box that he has. Can you tell us how many Spirits or people are in this house right now? Speak to Dave. If someone was touching that light behind Dave, can you do it again? Or you can touch this one right here. There's another one right here on the ground in front of me. Can you touch that one for me so that I know you're here? My name's Ryan and that's Dave. What's your name? Are you one of the students from the school? Right behind me in this room right over here, my friend Dave is trying to speak with you. He has things on his ears that may look really strange to you. And he has this box that he's holding or it might be sitting beside him. And you can use that box to speak to us, to tell us your name, to tell us your story. We don't mean you any harm. We're not here to antagonize you and we certainly don't want you to have to perform for us. So if you don't wanna to speak to us, you don't have to.
And in fact, if you would rather us just leave right now and stop trying to talk to you, just tell us to leave. One word, leave, and we will be packing up and out the door before you can say thank you. What if I left Dave up here on this floor by himself? And I went down here on the stairs. Would you be more likely to talk to him if he was more alone? What? Thank you. Who's back there behind Dave? Do you like that I'm not on the same level as him? No way, that's me. Thank you. Let me just try this one more time. No, that was not me. I almost fell down the stairs there. Okay. So far, I have not heard a single voice. Okay. But this is what happens on authentic investigations sometimes. Dave has no idea that the millimeter is going off behind him. If you're back there setting off that device behind Dave, can you please just go up to him and say his name? Say his name, Dave. Say hello, Dave. What if I went even further away? If there's anyone down here on the first floor, come upstairs. My friend Dave is up there. And he'd love to talk to you. It just shows you the variance in locations also because our last investigations, Estes Method Spirit Box session was off the charts. There was a very low male voice that tried to come through. Ooh. Who's the man? I'm going to leave the room again now. Whoever the man was that tried to talk, can you tell us your name? My name is Ryan. You may know that already. I've told you a couple times. That's Dave in there. Trying to be polite and make friends with you. What's your name? One voice. The whole time. Yeah, man, I'm not hearing anything on here. Yeah, there was the, um, the only weird thing that's happened since you put the headphones on. Yeah. Is I walked out of that room and onto the stairs, and as I was standing on the stairs completely still, the mel meter started going off behind you. Really? So I don't know if you moved at all in here to cause it to go off, but... I haven't moved at all that I know of. Interesting. Yeah. Very weird. So right now we are in the living room downstairs, a part of the house that we really haven't investigated other than that little SLS walkthrough that we did. So we have some equipment spread throughout, three cameras in here. Hopefully if something happens, we'll be able to pick it up. So, but so far it's been pretty quiet here unless we caught something on abandonment or on audio. Computer. Computer? Hmm. We do have the PSB7 set up over here with the temperature sensor turned on. Living room. It just said living room. Which is strange because 
that's where we are. Can you use the device on the table to tell us what your name is, please? Rolling EVP session in the living room of Pam's house. Run. We're not running. Why do you want us to run? If you want us to get out of your house, all you have to do is tell us. Don't what? come in. We're already here. We're already inside. Like I was telling you upstairs, we really don't want to intrude. So if you really don't want us here, all you have to do is let us know, say leave, tell us to get out, and we'll pack our stuff up and go because we don't want to make you uncomfortable in your space. Lord knows we're uncomfortable in your space. Cold as f in here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Check this out right here. This might look a little crazy, but you can use this as energy to communicate with us. Whoa, that's so cool. <laughs> look, guys. You touch that, that lights up. That's kind of wild. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you can see how that works. You can use that. To try and communicate with us. That's pretty cool. It's an interesting experiment. It's interesting to think that scratch. if- Scratch. You can scratch us if you want. But it's interesting to think that if I go over here and I touch that, that will go off. Mm -hmm. So it'd be an interesting experiment if they are able to touch If they are able to touch that, that maybe that will go off as well. Right. I'm going to step over here and record it. And maybe you go over there and touch that glow. Father. Father. I'm going to count down for you. Maybe you can try it when I get to zero. Three. Two. One. Zero. Watch. We're watching. Devil. This isn't the devil. But if you are, we'd love for you to show something to us. Before we go, I just wanted to say... Why am I here? Oh, that's weird. It said, why am I here? And then the EDI is just going nuts with like all of its lights. Not just the temperature drop, temperature rise, and air pressure all at the same time. We don't know why you're still here. That's what we're trying to figure out. You know Pam. She comes in here all the time. She brings her dogs here to play outside. She wants to know why you're still here too. You know, if you don't want to be here, you don't have to stay. You can move on. You can cross over. You can leave this place. Start a new chapter. You can cross over. You can be at peace. You can start again. We're not sure how this works, but I certainly hope that when it's my time, I have choices like that. I have choices to be at peace and rest or to start again and try something new. Dig. Whoa. Dig. Did dig? Did dig. Hmm. Maybe they decided to go and be at peace. I hope so. Not that we felt much here from the beginning, you know? I mean, obviously paranormal activity and things like that fluctuate, and most of the, most of the day and night we've been distracted by how cold it's been here. So we haven't really had much 
ability to tune in and really pick up on anything, but evidence-wise it's been slow. But just to give people an idea of how distracted we've been by the cold, it's 28.5 degrees as it says indicated on the display there. Standing right beside this ginormous heater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the biggest heater in the house and we have it turned on naturally. And still, right over here, it is still 28.5 degrees. <laughs> yes. It is absolutely freezing. Beyond freezing, really. And uh, it's only supposed to get colder uh, the longer the night goes on, because that's how that works. So I think that means we're gonna go ahead and pack it up and call it a night because we can't stand this cold much longer. Who knows, we may find more on review than what we realized. I mean, who knows what we caught on abandonment? We don't know in this moment. You guys know watching at home, but we don't know right now, so. But thank you all so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. That helps us more than you know. If you wouldn't mind, please hit that like button as well to help us out. If we get this video to 7,000 likes, that would help us out so much because getting more likes gets the video into the algorithm helps YouTube suggest it to more people who would like this type of content. So make sure you hit that like button, make sure you engage with the video, make sure you leave a comment down below letting us know what you thought of the video, what your favorite piece of this investigation was, and if you saw anything on this investigation that we didn't. Just so you guys know, little announcement, we have a new website, paranormal.quest. So as soon as this video is done, go up into your URL bar and type paranormal.quest. Register for the website. We even have a live chat on the website where you can chat with other fans of the show anytime. We may even pop in from time to time as well. So make sure you register for the website, read the forums, watch episodes, check it out. It is a lot of fun and it is just the start of the amazing things that we have in store for you. But if you guys wouldn't mind, share the video with your friends and family. And of course, we will see you next time on the next video. And this paranormal quest continues. Thank you guys so much. Peace.